we're on. Uh, so the, the question was uh, a question about uh, if you're working in a corporate environment, the sort of the benefits of like taking like two days or weeks off to do spiritual work like outside of London rather than outside of busy sort of location. And I actually think like you know like I'm I'm I think I think when you sort of pursue enlightenment or when you pursue like high spiritual growth. Uh, I think, you know, like Hawkins talks about meditation and contemplation. So like a, like a three-day retreat or a seven days, like a, like a little meditative break. But I think when your intention is for the, you know, your highest growth, you take whatever opportunities you can, mm. which will yeah. aid you. Yeah. Uh, it's like, well, if you have to work nine to five, but like you get 20 days holiday, mm. I mean, rather than spend those 20 days in, if there's an opportunity which will raise my consciousness, uh, you know, like the best I can do in London is like, see, do my contemplative work, continual prayer, uh, observation, of course, in miracles. But there's going to be like an advanced teacher in, uh, you know, uh, in a mount on a mountain somewhere in the middle of England, who's flying in from Tibet. You know, who's, who's reached the highest level of enlightenment, and people just go into bliss every time they meet him. <laughs> Uh, should you take like three days off, or should you stay in London? Personally, I would go. I would go because there is a there's an there is an advantage. There's an advantage. Like if you have a high teacher and there's a group of very advanced students for three days mm -hmm. which you're not getting access to um, so yes I would go but I mean what the drawbacks of that is that you know you want to be able to maintain that on a continual basis mm -hmm. um, I found like when I used to see Muji I'd go into states in his like three days four days in London I'd be off into states of very very high bliss uh, extreme high bliss mm -hmm. and I'd go you know he'd come to London every so, every so often or he was living in London, I, was go, I would go every, every Sunday to visit his house here in Brixton. So and then I think they're very useful, especially if you can do them on a reasonably regular basis, even if it's like twice a year or something, is because you learn how you lose high states of consciousness. Yeah, yeah. And so what I, what I learnt is like, Ooh. when you go into those groups, you go into very extreme high levels of consciousness, like the teacher's very high, mm. the students are very high, there's no distractions, you go to these wonderful bliss states, and then you're suddenly back in London. Mm. Uh, and then you, you start to learn how your ego tracks things in London. Yeah. How did it, oh, look, it identified to that. And then you start to learn how not to identify. So you start to transcend London from a different level. And you realize that you need to, and also for me, those states, when you go into those states, everything unfolds in a blissful manner. You know, there's so many synchronicities and wonderful things that happen after those retreats. And you know, and it gives you an added momentum to do the spiritual work in London. And you know, as you, if you do spiritual teachings, like London is no different to like mm. being in the Himalayas with uh, with uh, with a teacher of enlightenment, some Dalai Lama or whatever it is. It's actually London's the same thing. It's just that the ego has more things to track yeah. and doesn't have the basis of a very high energy field supporting it. Mm. But that energy field is within. You know, it's just that you haven't accessed it like you, like those those people have accessed it. So it then gives you added momentum because you can transcend to transcend London because you get tastes of how amazing it is. So I think that's the benefit. Um, and then, of course, to know as well with contemplation that you know you can reach that state in the middle of London. It's just that your ego is tracking too much stuff in London, like the job, the boss is too meaningful. You know, the, the noise in London is too meaningful. So if you have to stop tracking the noise, stop tracking the bustle, stop tracking the importance of the job, stop tracking all of this stuff, and then actually, eventually, the, you, uh, London becomes as good as, uh, as being on a retreat with the thing. And eventually there's no difference. And then you actually don't need to. You can just stick around in London and just be that, you see. But in the beginning, it's, you, know, you take every advantage you can to, to do it. And sometimes you learn amazing things, but of course that state is available in London, you just have to do the work. 
But there is also, I mean, as, as you know from Hawkins, there is grace if you meet a very high teacher because they transfer you know, like a catalytic mm -hmm. energy imprint into your aura, which then makes it easier to release stuff. So there is a grace in meeting the great grace of a high teacher. So that, that's also a benefit of, of being in those places. Um, Can I add to that? Yeah. Um, so I'm doing spiritual practice, but it wasn't until I actually attended a session um, from a Course of Miracles teacher who I think was a very high level. I, I then had my first Kundalini, Kundalini experience and then it kind of, it there was um, an acceleration, if you like. Um, so I think it could definitely be helpful from that perspective. Yes, I think yeah. so. And I think, I mean, the, the, the drawbacks, I think, are, well, one of, one of some of the drawbacks are not getting addicted uh, so that the ego makes a magical projection onto yeah. that, onto mm. the teachers and mm. onto the location. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. oh, I feel really, really happy when I'm in the Himalayas yeah. <laughs> with, 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 with La Lama Baba. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, uh, Lama Baba. Must be with Lama Baba at all times. So exactly. Around. Exactly. This happens though. This happens. Oh, it does. So, yeah. Actually, yes. Actually, oh. Baba. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that that can happen. So yes. I mean, that state's yeah. also here as well. Yeah. Also, the thing to understand is, you know, what we say in twelve-step groups is. Um, we call it geographicals in 12 step groups, we call it geographicals. Yeah, there's like, no geographical cure. Yeah, so we sort of say, like, yeah. people, who are, people who are in, 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 in active yeah. addiction say, well, if I go to France, then it's going to be better in France than it is in London, you know, I just need to change countries yeah. and then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. So that, that thing, of course, is when you change location, because all your triggers, in uh, in London or not there in another country, so you you get a the ego goes into you feel a sense of a high in a different environment. But what they say is you know after you've been there for six months and you get a job there, mm -hmm. then it's actually no no better than being in London. So that's just like a temporary high, and that would also happen to some extent. But you don't want to get caught up in that trap, otherwise you become like a sort of. Um, I mean, it's context. I mean, everything is context, yeah. but there are a few things to be to watch out for in terms of, you know, uh, magical teachers and magical locations yeah. as well. That you don't get caught in that trap. But it's a great question. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as a, as a student, you know, if you want enlightenment, you take every opportunity. Like I have to work nine to five, but there's an enlightened teacher, that, you know, in the in the next country, visiting Spain. I'm going to go off and, and visit them. Yeah, for sure. Mm 